Welcome, everybody, to the I'm Fat Podcast. Uh, uh, snacks are uh, best saved for later. With Jay Zawoski. That man ate all our shrimp and two plastic lobsters. And Rick Camp. Out the mist came a beast more stomach than that. <laughs> Welcome in to another edition of the I'm Fat Podcast, brought to you by our sponsors, Charlie the Bacon Guy, Mazda of Orland Park, Fredo's Culinary Kitchen, and Nick and Ivy Brewing. I am Rick Camp alongside a fellow fat Jay Zawoski. Jay, it has not actually been that long since we've spoken because no. we're actually recording on time for us for the first yes. time in basically a month. Yes, we are finally recording on a Sunday night, so... We were what well, we went live Tuesday night. Yeah. So not a ton of new stuff. So we've got some like bigger picture, funner mm-hmm. stuff, kind of like quizzy, kind of like last week we did the uh build your ballpark meal. We've got another one of those coming up. Yep. Uh, I'm gonna have Rick blind select a couple things. Uh Which we is going to the... make me mad. I guarantee <laughs> it will make you mad. It made me mad when I did it, so it's gonna make yep. you mad, damn it. Yes. Anyway, thanks for being with us. We appreciate it. Uh, by the way, I'm pre-apologizing for all the burping I'll be doing this episode. I've already had a Perrier grapefruit, which was just lovely. Thank you. And now I'm drinking this is my new find. I found this today at the Jewels. Canada Dry Fruit Splash Cherry Ginger Ale. Ooh, the, this there. There are a few things that sound more 40s than Canada Dry promotion. Oh, I'll kill you. <laughs> All right. Anyway, make sure you're following us on social media at I'm Fat Pod, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. And yeah, that's everything. And then we've got the fan page on Facebook, the I'm Fat Podcast fans group. So check that out. Mm-hmm. Email us, I'm Fat Pod at gmail.com. Voicemail us, 708 858 3314. We've got our merch shop, I'm Fat Merch.com. Great stuff there. And if you're shopping on Tee Public for anything, go through our link at I'mFatMerch.com. Just type that in instead of Tee Public, and then find the stuff you want. Burp number one, and then we get a little. That bit was of a, elongated too. I was trying to hold it, and I, I had just okay. gave up. Um, we get a little kickback when you buy anything from Tee Public, as long as you go through our link. So we would appreciate that if you shop there often. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are good stuff. Everything yeah. I've ever bought from them has been high quality, lasts a long time. Mm-hmm. So. Go for it. All right. With that, last week we teased it, um, but didn't actually get to it. And we better get to it before it ends because there's yes. one week left in the Wisconsin State Fair. It opened up on uh, August 1st, which would have been Thursday. Yeah. Uh, and it runs until the 11th. Okay. So end of the week. Mm-hmm. And we have in front of us, I have it on cardstock because it's important. And I didn't know that was it. What was in a printer? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the list of the new food items mm-hmm. at the Wisconsin State Fair. Now we're not going to go through all of these. And I thought about putting our friend Jen Puente on, but then I figured Jen might be a bit busy this week. That's fair. Yes. <laughs> so I didn't bother. Fair enough. Bothering her because knowing Jen Puente, she would probably mm-hmm. say, "I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll make it work." Yeah. No, we got it. So. And you've lost your angle of trying to hook her up with me. Seeing I did as want to hook you up with her. Seeing as she was married when you wanted to do that. Guess which we didn't know at the time, mind guess you. what? Sorry. For the record. You were, was I? You were, oh, yeah. You were, I, was you were te- I, was te- te- I was technically. <laughs> that's when I was in the technically married, but really not aspect exactly. of, of existence. Which, by the way, <laughs> you ever want to raise your anxiety level? Oh boy, live with someone that you're trying to not be married to anymore. I'm good. I enjoy my wife and hopefully she enjoys me. So yeah. at least for a few more years, hopefully she enjoys me. Anyway, so we've got the list. I have a bunch of things checked off here. Is there anything, Rick, that stood out to you as like the one of ones on this list? Okay, so the way I went about this, because I don't know, this is just the way I do things. Instead of being smart and printing everything like you, I screen I was I was scrolling through on my phone and just screenshotted things that that okay. stood out to me. So let's see. What do I the one of ones is I don't know, just by name, the burnt end bonanza. <laughs> which yes. is I'll just read the little paragraph. Satisfy your hankering for some good old country fixins with this burnt end bonanza. This dish serves crisp and crackling burnt end pork butt on top of a bed of hearty tater tots. All this goodness is topped with Wisconsin beer cheese, 
chopped scallions, a drizzle of kicking bourbon sauce, and a side of sour cream. Yep, there it is on your screen. So I'm going to go through the, uh, I'll be the webmaster here. I got to accept the cookies mm -hmm. to get the whole picture. Um, those look real good. I mean, yeah. we, we have a shirt. You have a saying, no bad words there. Mm -hmm. This is tots, cheese, barbecue sauce. Yeah. I mean, it's everything you want. It's everything you want. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's so many, there's so many things. Even the, the, especially the dessert stuff got me this year. Oh, yeah. More than I expected. Like the cherry vanilla cream soda rice crispy. Yeah, see, there's no picture of that one. I know. I want to, is it just basically like a reddish looking rice yeah. crispy? Like, what, what are we dealing with here? Because Jesus. I need that in my life. So this is from Soda Lish. That's the company. It says the cherry vanilla cream soda rice crispy is so delish you'll be treating yourself to this flavored rice crispy. Okay, that's the worst description ever. Yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> um, yeah, you can tell Jen's asking them for a description, and they're like, "God damn it, we got to do this." Uh, yeah, this you'll like this thing. Right. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, that sounds. I mean, there's no like you said. Mm -hmm. there, there's nothing wrong with that uh, no. cherry vanilla cream soda so i'm wondering if they here's my prediction okay they use cherry vanilla cream soda mm -hmm. and somehow mix that with the marshmallow yes that's... and then that's how they make the rice krispie treat that would be my yeah. prediction that that makes a lot of sense to me um what what stood out to you because um, i could go on for days well, with this um kind of all of them uh mm -hmm. I'm trying to find this. Uh, the buffalo chicken dip on brand. Yeah, this one also doesn't have a picture. This is from Jump Around. The uh, the buffalo chicken dip roll served with bacon cheddar ranch dipper. I so I'm almost, assuming it's an I egg almost roll? clicked on that one. I, I, I believe so. That would be my thought. Is this is a buffalo chicken dip egg roll? Mm -hmm. So what you typically you know you get her at a party, someone makes the buffalo chicken dip. That's in an egg roll, and then you dip that in. Yeah this ranch dip that sounds good um here's what really got my attention and i don't know how to feel about this okay it is the funnel cake root beer battered cheese curds i i had that one too and i'm trying to figure out again what exactly this does you know like like what is the it gives you diabetes <laughs> oh <laughs> got it got it now now it's making sense to me mm-hmm I mean, it's it sounds great. I'm yeah. not gonna lie about that. Yeah. Like it's white cheddar cheese curds covered in funnel cake root beer batter, deep fried, and topped with powdered sugar. Okay. I mean, I don't know how the again though. How does the root beer batter work? I don't know. That I mean, they look fantastic. They almost look like little uh, like cheese curd french toast bites kind of yeah but i don't know i just you know what i retube packed to everybody in wisconsin like this stuff here's some of the other stuff i marked off okay uh beer cheese and brought spud muffins that's what i that's my username on <laughs> never mind <laughs> brisket beer cheese baker mm -hmm. cheesy sriracha funnel cake bites I have the cherry vanilla crispy on there too. Deep okay. fried lemonade bites. Yeah, I took I took that one. I took I screenshot that one too. That one. Whoa, buddy. I'll read this description. This one. Nothing is better than a refreshing ice cold lemonade break on a hot summer day. Take it up a notch. Take it up a fair notch with a sip of these deep fried lemonade bites made with Hawaiian sweet rolls dipped in a French toast batter. A homemade lemonade curd filling, deep fried to golden perfection, and tossed in a lemon sugar with a drizzle of icing. Now, this, if if I'm looking at this graphic correctly, it has a, it says Wisconsin State Fair Sporky's Food Competition, and on the picture is a first. I mean, I get which it. Means, did this win? I would not be shocked at all. It looks insane. Oh, I can almost like taste that, like the hot, like the hot yeah. dough. Oh my god! I bet that's one of those things you cannot eat many of because it's a lot. Yes, but it's 
it's totally worth it. There was a, one more too that I want to show a picture of because I thought okay. they were super interesting. Uh, the elote corn ribs. So basically, oh, what they do yeah, is like that. they made like the the ribs, like the bones of ribs, are served by the cob of the corn, mm-hmm. and then you just kind of eat it as if you'd eat ribs. Yeah, it's incredibly it looks really creative. good. So take the Midwest staple of corn on the cob, but add a little spice. The elote corn ribs are made from corn on the cob with the cob asking as a, acting as the bone of the corn rib tossed in hickory smoked batter and deep fried. Dusted with cotilla cheese, these ribs will be served over a bed of crispy kettle chips with a side of homemade elote dip and a lime wedge on the side. Yes. Mm-hmm. Can I can I give one that the my version of the I don't know what this is. Yes, please. Pizza jerky. Pizza jerky. Have you ever wanted to put a piece of pizza in your pocket? Who hasn't? Mm. Yeah. Again? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) The pizza jerky is the no mess solution to eating pizza while walking around. Pizza jerky is made with beef and is high in protein, low in carbs and gluten free. So is it basically just like pizza flavored beef? I would imagine, I would imagine this would be the equivalent of Charlie made pizza bacon. Yeah, it'd probably be oregano, you know, some kind of tomato seasoning, mm-hmm. um, maybe some fennel, like the sort of things that would that you would find in your pizza. I would think. Yes. The the, the picture doesn't look all that exhilarating. No, no. but it's it jerky. Like shoe, like, it looks like shoe leather. Right, but I mean that's what jerky kind of looks like. So I'm. True. Not too mad about it. Mm-hmm. All right. A couple of the other things, and we'll let you guys check these out on your own, by the way. Yeah. Because uh, you should. And the, there's pictures of most of them. The website is WIS State. Actually, it's WI State Fair.com. WI State Fair.com. And then you go to the food and shopping and then go to new foods mm-hmm. and uh, they'll be there. So these couple other ones I wrote down uh, um, the hot ham and glazers, which is basically like thick cut ham. Uh, and cheese on a donut. Okay. A loaded baked potato churro, mm-hmm. which is a Sporky's finalist, even though the picture did not look that appetizing to me. Ag- agreed. But the idea does. Mm-hmm. And then um, I'm not a big Reuben guy, but Usinger's. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> God. Uh, sorry. I just, I had a flashback. The uh, Usinger's <laughs> uh, Reuben brought. Usinger's makes a bunch of like brats like that. And if you're okay. ever in Milwaukee, you can kind of go into their factory store and find like all these different kind of creative brats and they're all great. So I probably wouldn't get the Reuben brat, but it just kind of jogged my memory to mention mm-hmm. that if you're ever in Milwaukee, uh, go to the Usinger's factory and get yourself some, some stuff. Okay. Here's a That's couple a more, show. a couple more that I've got. Okay. The brandy old fashioned barbecue brat. Za. Yeah. I had that down there too. Yeah. The old <laughs> brandy old fashioned barbecue brat za is a delicious pizza with smoked brat and other delicious toppings. Okay, sure. Yeah, no picture about, of that one either, unfortunately. How about the fried chicken and waffles on a stick? There's not yes. really a good picture of that one. It's just fried chicken and waffle on a stick with hot house sauce and hot honey. Yeah, I don't I don't know if you need a picture of that necessarily. No. <laughs> You don't. I think, I think it kind of tells the story. Yeah. Uh, but, but I'll say this. If you're into a lotes, mm-hmm. if you're into pickles. Yes. The Wisconsin State Fair had you covered. Yes, they do. Uh, there's a lot of that sort of stuff on there. Does the there's funnel also a lot dog of, intrigue you? The, the what dog? The funnel dog. Yes. Yes. It's, <laughs> yes, indeed it does. It's a foot long hot dog <laughs> dipped in funnel cake mix and then deep fried to perfection and topped with all the classics. Yes, that's that sounds amazing. It sounds like mm-hmm. something I have dreamed up on my own. Like, yeah. Let's see. I got this funnel cake and I've got this hot dog. I did put I did actually Wait, that's put, not a hot dog. Oh. I did actually put a drink on here. Oh, look at the you. key lime pie iced cooler. Oh, that sounds really refreshing. Yeah. Okay. So it says the key lime pie iced cooler features real key lime juice, sweetened condensed milk a sprinkle of graham cracker crumbs and a lime on the side to create a tropically refreshing delight. Yeah. Uh, that picture How looks good like it does that look, especially Ooh. when you're at the Wisconsin state fair, <laughs> sweating your balls off, right? That's going to hit the spot. 
Yes, that one's awesome. And then I have one more towards the bottom. Okay. The Wisconsin Bacon Brandy Old Fashioned Bubble Waffle. I saw that too. It looks great. So this one, the description reads, savor the perfect blend of sweet and savory with the Wisconsin Bacon Brandy Old Fashioned Bubble Waffle. Delight your taste buds as you bite into the crispy yet fluffy bubble waffle infused with the rich flavors of maple syrup, bacon, and topped with maraschino cherries. Just yep. kiss. That, the dude. maraschino cherries, thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Thanks for coming, everybody. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, here's the deal. If you are going to this or you went to this, mm-hmm. let us know what you ate. Take some pictures if you yes, can. please. And uh, send them to us. I'm fatpod at gmail.com. We've got to make this happen. We've mm-hmm. it's it is too obvious. It's too on the nose for us. It makes all the sense in the world. We have a friend up there that will accommodate right. us. It's not that far. Exactly. This is something that we need to do. Mm-hmm. And look, I'm looking at let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have ten things on my list checked off. So if I put a hundred bucks aside, I'm probably covered. Right? Yeah. Ten bucks an item would probably mm-hmm. be. Being conservative, like it's probably pretty. I would probably have some money to spare. Yeah, we're yeah. doing this. We're definitely doing this. So, if you'd like to sponsor our trip or the mm-hmm. show in general, I'm fatpot at gmail.com. Absolutely. We are open to new sponsors. So, if you yes, we are. know somebody that's a good fit, uh, feel free and uh, have them uh, join us. We would love mm-hmm. that. Also, speaking of sponsors, if we're going to drive to Milwaukee, we're going to need a car. Absolutely. And Rick, I would swing by and pick you and Sam up in my Mazda CX-30, my 2022, or my Mazda CX-5 if you want to bring a bunch of stuff home, a little more trunk space on that one, both from Mazda of Orland Park, 8910 West 159th Street in Orland Park. Mazda of Orland Park is the website. Go check them out. They've got a bunch of new cars out on the market now. They've got the CX-70, which is electric, the CX-50, mm-hmm. which is kind of like a crossover not a wagon, not an SUV, like somewhere kind of in between. Beautiful. That might be my next car because every time I'm in there getting service done, there's a burp. Uh, I am checking out that CX-50. Like I walk in, set my bag down. Mm-hmm. I go, there it is again. I'm going to go look at that. And I'm going to stare at it longingly and hope that someday it'll be my next car. And I think it's going to be when the time comes. So go get yourself a Mazda in here. I say this all the time, but I want to make sure I reiterate it. You can get a car anywhere. You can buy a Mazda anywhere. You don't get the service you get from our friends at Mazda of Orland Park anywhere else. So go there. They're going to take care of you. They're not going to pressure you. I was in there last week getting some work done before my trip to Kansas City. Mm -hmm. A guy walked in the door, you know, and the guy at the desk said, hey, uh, can I help you with anything? Guy goes, no, I'm just looking around. He says, great. If you need anything, I'm right here. No pressure. Come and get me and I'll I'll show you whatever you need. Um, But in the meantime, take your time, look around, and we're here to help. That was it. Whereas other car places I've gone into back in the day, the second you step foot on their property, they are on you like a swarm of bees. Yeah. Not leaving you alone, not giving you time to think. They're trying to pressure you into a buy. Not at Mazda of Orland Park. So go check them out. 8910 West 159th Street out there in Orland Park. Good stuff. Um, speaking of uh, tasks for our listeners, mm-hmm. I saw something today that I texted you. Yeah. And... I didn't know how to feel about it. Hope and I went to the jewels. We were doing our weekly shopping and uh, I was going down to cereal. Alex, I'm trying to, I can't find that Kelsey mix that we yeah. talked about a couple weeks ago. I haven't mm-hmm. seen it anywhere. If, by the way, if anyone sees that, let us know. I'm fat pot at gmail.com. All right. Here's, here's what I saw. Fruit loops, rainbow sherbet scoops. And it's a pink box and you see, you know, the typical fruit loops, but they're ball shaped instead of ring shaped. Mm-hmm. So they look like ice cream scoops and the toucan Sam's got a big stack of ice cream in his hand. And then on the side of the box, it says cools your mouth. That's weird. So how <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't understand. Yeah. Uh, is it like menthol? <laughs> Does it taste <laughs> like a Newport? <laughs> I don't understand. All right. So I actually I looked want, it up. no, now I need I need <laughs> I need to ask like some form of AI to give me two can Sam smoking a Newport. Oh, see, there you go. There you go. That's how it works, kid. I just blow the menthol right out of cereal, every bowl. <laughs> uh all right. So here's what Kellogg's says. 
The cereal's crunchy puffs are flavored with rainbow sherbet, including raspberry, lime, and citrus, which work together to create a tongue-tingling coolness. That doesn't make sense. No. That's not, you're not explaining the process. No. I don't, I don't understand. I, I don't know how this works. We need to figure this out. So we're challenging you. Yes. The listener, because I'm not doing it. Hell no. Sounds gross to me. Yeah. If you see this, the Fruit Loops Rainbow Sherbet Scoops, mm -hmm. you buy a box, you you try it, and you send us a review and maybe an explanation of how it works. Yeah, right. Maybe we'll send you some stuff. Just saying. So go do that. Fruit Loops Rainbow Sherbet Scoops. Saw them at the Jewels today. On the box, it says, cools your mouth. And it's, I was like, oh, that looks interesting. Nope. As soon as I saw that. Because we're already digesting nothing but chemicals, like 24-7. Right. I don't need some kind of weird, like, I don't want to lick icy hot with Fruit Loops in my mouth. Right. It doesn't sound exciting. So, I don't no. know. Someone do it for us. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah, that's, um, no thanks. Like, shouldn't it say pretty, I don't know. Like, shouldn't the Kellogg's website flat out tell you how this works? You would think. Like, you know what I mean? Like, wouldn't you think they'd want people to feel comfortable? I don't. I don't know. I don't know. It does not sound good to me. So if you see it, try it. Let us know. <laughs> I'm fatpot at gmail.com or voicemail us with your cool mouth. Yeah. 708-858-3314. Okay. I want to get to this $10 thing because Sam showed me okay. this one this week and it racked my brain for a little bit because yeah, I think there's I think there's two paths to go and this is the $10 of appetizers. Yes. And for those that are on um that are not watching the YouTube youtube.com slash I'm fat podcast I'll read them off again just like last week. Your $4 apps, Mott Sticks, Onion Rings, Wings. $3, Fries, Fried Pickles, Nachos. Two, Tater Tots, Cheese Curds, Pretzel Knots. And one, Potato Wedges, Chips and Guac. I'm kind of using that as chips and your salsa, queso, yeah, salsa guac, whatever, yeah. like whatever you prefer is a dipping sauce. Chips and dip. Yes, chips and dip and veggies. Should right. pay me a dollar, bitch. Right. All right, Jay. I Can I predict? <laughs> can I try and guess what yours would be? I would like you to, yes. Because I had it and then I just, I'm sort of changing my mind, but I want to see if you had the same instinct as I did. Okay. I think you would go, wings are a definite. So that's $4 for sure. Yeah. So you've got six dollars left, and I think you are going to go with. Hmm. It depends on if you're going volume the rest of the way. Because if you're going volume the rest of the way, I think you would go curds, knots, wedges, chips, and dip. Curds, knots, knots, wedges, chips, and dip. So uh, that way you're able to substitute the mozzarella you're getting the mozzarella or you're getting cheese with the curds as a, yeah. at a value as opposed to the mozzarella sticks pretzel knots are just different you're getting chips mm -hmm. and you're getting potatoes that's pretty good i i like your logic mm -hmm. i am never passing on mozzarella sticks okay like i actually thought about going two mozzarella sticks and tater tots and calling it a day mm -hmm. um but what i think i'm doing and i know you're supposed to pick one from every but you know what I'm a simple man. Yeah. I'm doing mozzarella sticks, wings. So that's $8. That's two of the $4 items. Then I'm going tots. Because there you get your volume. You also get mm -hmm. your cooling effect. Yeah. Uh, on the uh, wings, if you need them, you can also use the tots to dip in the leftover wing sauce. Mm -hmm. I thought about going mozzarella sticks, wings, double wedges. Okay. Like a double order of wedges, but I'm going to go mozzarella sticks, wings, and tater tots. Mozz, wings. Okay. All right. So I had to do, I, I did the dual path. 
for myself of the with wings and without wings. Okay. <laughs> because I feel like you, yeah. you can just get so much more value. So the non wing path. Okay. For me, I, like now, this, I, yeah. I realize this is, this would be different for you. Obviously. Sure. I want fried pickles. Okay. Sure. Fried pickles are so unique compared to everything else on there and they're delicious. And you know, there's a pretty, like it's tough to find a really bad fried pickle. And I want the slice. I don't want a fried pickle spear. I think that's dumb. No, that's weird. Then I want all the $2 ones. I think there okay. is screaming value in that $2 line. That's just smart. Because then and you still I, got three bucks left. Yes, exactly. Like, no, a buck. No, I've got a dollar left and I'm yeah. going to get my chips and queso. <laughs> so I've got fried pickles. So I've got something that cools a little bit. I've got tots. I've got curds so I can get my cheese. I've got pretzel so i get like that different sensation Saltiness, yeah yeah and i get chips and chips and queso or chips and salsa based on how i'm feeling that day yes like sign me up all right that's a good i like that that's just that's as frugal and you're gonna be full and you're gonna be happy and you're gonna have a good variety now give me the wing path okay the wing path Ooh. is very similar so but i just have to you know where am i gonna make where am i gonna you know make some changes sure um and i'm gonna go with the wings and the two dollar row. Okay, so, so wings, tots, curds, tots, knots, curds and, wings. and pretzel knots. So That's I'm sacrificing the chips and guac, or the chips and from each probably chips and queso, and the fried pickles to get actual meat. Okay, I like that. I shoo, that's I mean that's a smart that's a smart right there. Mm -hmm. It's just too hard for me to pass up mozzarella sticks. Like if they're there, I'm always like. Eh? They're on the menu. See those? Everybody wants them. Someone just needs to say it. Yep. Because everybody wants them. Just say yes. It's usually me. <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten to the point now where I just go, I'm getting mod sticks. <laughs> or we're getting mod sticks. Right. You know, like, like we used to if do you that. Want on board? Pizza. Come on. <laughs> All right. I like that. All right. Well, that steers us nicely into this little game yes. uh, that I would that uh Brian and Sarah played with us uh, mm -hmm. last night. And uh here's what we're gonna do. So you've seen these things online and you don't need YouTube to see this because there's no graphic involved in it. But the way the game works is you have five slots. Okay. And I'm going to give you, we're going to do two. I'm going to give you five baked goods. Okay. And then I'm going to give you five cookies. So the two separate games. Okay. You have to fill them in one through five without mm -hmm. knowing what's coming or what's next. Ooh. Okay. So it, let's say we're doing this with, uh pizza toppings yeah and you've got five and i go pepperoni you go okay that's one. one i go uh green peppers four and you gotta mm -hmm. fill out your top five and hope that you get the ranking you like okay, okay. everybody playing at home understand yeah got it okay rick here we go you have five slots open i'm gonna write these down for you baked goods ready mm -hmm. okay cinnamon roll three Okay, all right. Brookie, which for those that don't know is like the half chocolate chip cookie, half brownie. Two. Okay, interesting. Bagels. Ooh, I do love bagels. Four. <laughs> okay. I think you're going to be happy with your list. Okay. Pound cake. God, I love pound cake. One or five. So I oh, so you have one or five left. Mm. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I don't like going five, but I'm going to go five. Okay. And last on the list, chocolate chip cookies. Bam. There we go. All right. So I think, yes, I think you nailed this. The only thing I, all right. So you have chocolate chip cookies. One uh -huh. rookie two. Yeah. Cinnamon roll three mm -hmm. bagel four pound cake yeah. five. Yeah. Okay. The only thing I would probably switch there is cinnamon roll to Brookie. However, and maybe you agree with me on this, big level of variance with cinnamon rolls. Absolutely. The best cinnamon roll is unbeatable. Like a yeah. Cinnabon, mm -hmm. maybe the top dessert on the planet. Yeah. But if you ever have like a Holiday Inn Express cinnamon roll, mm -hmm. not as good. <laughs> no, no, that's very true. So I think... You're probably good because I would say the ceiling on a the floor on a brookie mm -hmm. is higher than like the median of a cinnamon roll. Yeah. So it's a smart list. So again, okay, chocolate chip cookies, brookie, 
cinnamon roll bagel pound cake. Yes. All right. Here we go with the cookies. Ready? Okay. By the way, what did what did yours end up being in this? I, I think you and I had almost the same, except mm-hmm. I switched pound cake and bagel. Okay. That's so fair. yeah. Um, I, I almost certain. Um, okay. Cookie wise, here we go. Yes. Okay. Number well, first one: oatmeal sure. or raisin. Just to troll Tony, five. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's actually not that bad, but screw Tony Gill. Fudge stripes. Ooh. Fudge stripes by the Keebler Company. Three? Okay. Frosted sugar cookie. Ooh. Now, in my mind, what? this is the thing you buy, Jewel. Yeah. The sugar cookie with the f- frosting with the sprinkles on it? Yes. I'm sorry, Jewels? Mm-hmm. Thank you. you have one, two, and four left. God, I'm. <laughs> First of all, just pausing you. Yeah. I love how intensely seriously you take this. Yes, <laughs> I absolutely do. Yes, um, Rick is. It's like it's like who wants to be a millionaire right now with Rick? Yeah. Oh God, uh, I don't know what to do. Can I phone a friend? <laughs> um. One, Frosted two, sugar four. cookies. I'm definitely not giving it one because I think there's going to be something that I like better. Man, two or four. Because there could be a whammy. There could be something like yeah. oatmeal raisin still in there. So, and I don't want. I'm going to play it safe and put it at two. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Frosted sugar cookie goes two. Okay. Next up, gingerbread. Four. Okay. Number one, cookie crisp. God damn it. <laughs> Hey, it's a bowl of cookies. <laughs> it's a big ass bowl of chocolate chip cookies. I mean, that's good, but like <laughs> I was I thought for sure Oreos were gonna be in there somewhere, and I was gonna I was trying to save that one spot for Oreos. Yeah. I think All I right. had I did the same thing where I was like, well, chocolate chip's gonna pop up here, or Oreos are gonna pop up, so I saved exactly. my top spot. Yep. If Got I'm cool. ranking this list, mm-hmm. Fudge stripes, number one, baby. Yeah, I kind of regret not putting them at one. Um, but you didn't know. Or, or I should say, I, I, I should have put them at two. I should have put them at two. Like, yeah. just thinking about it, I was between two and three in the moment. So I should have put them two. And then, so like, man, what would be my actual ideal? It would probably be them one. Probably still the sugar cookie two. Hmm. I gingerbread i only have a taste for like in the season so yeah. it's tough to rank that that high yeah ask me again at christmas yeah exactly <laughs> then it's a three with a bullet but otherwise i'm probably fine like any like the the bottom three can be in whatever order i don't really care yeah um I th- those frosted sugar cookie ones they always look better than they taste that's the other thing mind. i think this is a crappy set of them um yeah, well, I didn't make the list. Yeah. Uh, blame the fine folks at the, uh, what I got to get the name of the podcast here. Sorry. It is the Makeshift Project. That is the name of the podcast who did this uh, on their social medias. So there you go. They're the ones who are to blame for this. If you didn't notice, my browser jumped. I'm trying to like adjust everything here. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> if I'm coming off as a little distracted at the moment. No, I am. You're good. Well, I was a little distracted too because you get t- you get texts about like, "Hey, betting opportunity," and I'm like, "Hmm, don't know how long that's going to be there, but it's done." Sure. Um, yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, all right. Well, that's good. That was fun. I'm glad yeah. you. I'm, I I I think you're happy with your list. Maybe not perfectly satisfied, but I'm extremely happy with the with the uh, baked good list, the cookie list. Eh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Po- you know, pound cake. Mm-hmm. Eh. Eh. I will say, have you ever been to um, Beatrix where Charlie the Bacon Guy works in Oak Brook? I have not. Sam has been multiple times. They have, well, there's a chocolate chip and there's a lemon. The Angel Food Muffin. Ooh. It is like eating a cloud. It is unbelievable. Sounds wonderful. Yes. So if you're ever out in Oak Brook, mm-hmm. go to Beatrix and get one of those. Yeah. Uh, this is for everybody, not just Rick. Yeah. I promise you, you're going to like it. 
You know what else you're going to like if you're out in Schaumburg? Mm. Hold on. Right. I have to burp. You know, where you, culinary kitchen. you know where you'll also be burping because you'll have just wolfed down a ton of <laughs> incredibly good food. Yes, it, culinary kitchen. yes, Fredo's Culinary Kitchen will make you burp from the I'm Fat Burger, the I'm Fat Grilled Cheese, uh, the I'm Fat Pizza, all of them wonderful, all of them delicious, all of them uh, same ingredients, but different, you know, stuff. Um, one's a pizza, one's a grilled cheese. You get it. Mm-hmm. It's not a complicated right. process. Uh, they've got yeah. the giant mozzarella sticks, the Cajun bites, uh, but really anything you're looking for there, uh, it's going to be amazing. This month, they've got the Ditka mm-hmm. pizza going on in, yeah. ce- or in celebration of the Bears preseason. <laughs> uh, so make sure you go get yourself a Ditka burger. Uh, a little aside on him in a second here, by the way. Um, oh. So go check out our friends at Fredo's Culinary Kitchen. You want to place an online order? Do so. Use the co- the promo code I'm fat. You'll save 10% on your order every time at Fredo's Pizza.com. The address, 628 South Roselle Road. You can order online, save that 10%, then go in pick it up and eat it right there. That's fine. You can do that. It'll save you some time. And it'll save mm-hmm. you some money. And what's more valuable than that? There you go. Fredo's pizza.com is the place to place your order. Yeah. Um, okay. Just, okay. I'm not trying to be morbid or dickish. Is he not? Well, is coach like not doing good? It feels like he's not around a lot. And like, you would think That's he would have been at least like, talk to about mongo yeah that's a good point i didn't even think about that Um, i know they didn't maybe have the greatest relationship because of like i know the i always remember those bears he would always tell those bears like don't do sponsorships because it distracts you from and then 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 he's he's popping up in every commercial and i think that Mm -hmm. rubbed a lot of the guys the wrong way yeah Um, and i think mongo was among them so sure. I'm I, I'm wondering I'm not, I'm obviously not hoping but it's just right I don't know it's been radio silence from Ditka and I I follow John Vincent the Cubs anthem anthem singer yeah on Facebook uh, we're friendly mm-hmm. and he's always like kind of with coach and I don't know I just I don't know it's not something yeah. you want to ask about right yeah that's although kind of to to pivot on that too feel old but also cool to see all the bears representation at hall of fame weekend. Yeah. That was like, cool. obviously like seeing everybody with Mongo was cool. It's obviously like incredibly unfortunate seeing the state that he is in at this point, yeah. but that's what ALS will do to you. But, um, yeah, but to see him to see, by the way, did you, uh, it popped in my timeline this week. The ice bucket challenge started 10 years ago. Oh my week. god! <laughs> Ten years ago, that was one of the first true viral trends. Yeah, because it because there and it, I'm sure it kind of started that just because of the trend and the fact that I'm pretty sure it started because of the sports industry is kind of cool because it was um Tom Haberstro, mm-hmm. his mom was dying. I forget if at that point she had just been diagnosed or what the situation was at that moment in time, but he wanted to raise awareness for it. And like he had, you know, plenty of ins within the NBA. He was covering the heatles and all that. And you know, that that team too. So tons of ins and the fact that, you know, they've been able to do that. And honestly, like it feels like ever since then, like the, the like public consciousness of ALS has been so much more profound than it was before. Well, and you also have, high profile like steve gleason and mongo and mm-hmm. sarah langs now suffering from als yeah. and the thing i saw a lot of people asking like on the video of mongo like when they're showing him the bust and they're showing him the yeah uh, like the induction people are like respectfully is he aware of what's going on yeah with yeah with als your mind is fine it's your body that just can't do anything mm-hmm. which is what to me what makes it like the most devastating it's, thing in the world it's like yeah you're trapped Oh my God. It's awful. I, I, what a nightmare. And like all the props to his wife, Misty, who is like by his side all the time and an advocate for him. And like the other thing too, that I really like is it has never been with them. Like a poor us. Right. Exactly. it's, It's always like come and celebrate. Like they had like a block party this week. Mm-hmm. And they live in Homer Glen, and like they just put on Facebook, like, "Hey, come out and celebrate." 
We're yeah. gonna have DJs and music and stuff. Like, come on out. Like Dan Hampton will probably. I think actually, I think Hamp had COVID, so it couldn't be there. Yeah. But like Mike Singletary was there, Fentick was there, Dent was there. Like all mm-hmm. these guys, and they're just like, yeah, come hang out, come celebrate Mongo. It, I it, it was beautiful. I, it makes me mm-hmm. so sad because I I don't have the picture handy. But when I was a kid, two of my uncles owned a butcher shop. Yeah. Uh, and right by St. Xavier University, like there in 103rd Street, like just uh, east of Pulaski. It's called Southside Meats. And when they had the grand opening, Mongo and Keith Van Horn were there. They were like the nice. celebrities. Yeah. And I just talked to those two about Walter Payton the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I was probably like six or seven. Yeah. You know, and those guys were like, to me, they're superheroes. Like, yeah. You know, and like, so like, it's like Walter. Does he only wear ruse? Like, does he wear other shoes? And I'm like, no, you know, he's got like dress shoes. I'm like, oh, cool. All right. Anyway, so like Walter, like, <laughs> what does he like listen to? Like, what's his favorite music? I'm like, yeah. God, kid, shut up. But they couldn't have been cooler. Yeah. And um, that's when Mongo was with Deborah, who was okay. like a recent Miss Illinois, and she became his valet mm-hmm. during his wrestling days. Um, so I'll try to find that picture and, and post it somewhere. But uh, it's me and my sister and Mongo and Keith Van Horn. Really and Mongo's cool. got the like the aviator with like the Ditka fade, yeah, and like this blue plaid shirt that's like skin tight and is rolled up, and he's like just ripping out of it. Like, damn, they were the coolest. Uh, they were rock stars to kids my age, mm-hmm. and uh, to see Mongo like, like to see that guy in that state is right. very difficult. So, yeah. anyway, respect to Mongo and congrats mm-hmm. on the Hall of Fame, and of course, like Devin Hester and Julius Peppers. Yeah. Peppers came out, man, looking like. It. <laughs> It's like an yeah. old man. I know. Like the old it's wise man. Five years and he aged 50. Yeah. He's like, like sit down, young buck. Happened? Let me tell you a story. I'm like, what the? What do you turn into Denzel right. Washington? What the hell? I mean, yeah, he's one of the greatest. Like, it sounds weird to say it like this because it, it takes on a different tone than it's meant. One of the best, like, physical specimens in, like, football oh, history. 100%. He, to be what was he six six like 280 290 and be able to do everything he did on a football field and enough on a basketball court to where he could play at carolina is insane yeah, that that is that's crazy that like, like 290 uh, is essentially the weight that like aaron donald played at more or less like yep. that was part of the reason aaron donald was in the top 10 pick is just because he was so specific at least that people thought at the time in terms of what role he had to play that you stretch that out to six six, and that was Julius Peppers, just like coming off the edge, like a, a monster. Like and that was, play, the, the interception in Carolina, and maybe the worst quarterback game I've ever God. seen between Todd Collins and Jimmy Clausen. Oh, and he like <laughs> deflected Lord. the pass, and then like while falling, intercepted it. Was just he was incredible. And what was cool too is like him and Mac, <gasps> Cleo Mac, uh, like came in with super high expectations and like were immediately great. Yes, exactly. There was no like, oh, this guy's not really working out. Like, no. Well, the, no, there was a little because like Peppers didn't have to look like he was giving that much effort to be great. That's, so that's some the Ryan so, Sandberg thing. Yeah. So it's dumb people were like, well, he doesn't look like he's trying, uh, but actually. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, all right. I got a couple other little things. You got something you got to mm-hmm. get to here? Um, I have one small thing. We can all right. Get go to. for it. Well. All right. Uh, Andy's frozen custard is amazing. This is not breaking news. Indeed. There are locations everywhere. You can find one. Yes. Uh, right now, they have the Shy Town Raz as a flavor for concrete or Sunday. And it's got Riz because good lord, <laughs> the the vanilla custard with real raspberries and like hard shell chocolate pieces in there. Yes, that is Rick oh, Camp in a cup. It really is like that. The raspberry flavor gets mixed in throughout, so mm. even like the pieces, the like spoonfuls where you're not getting an actual raspberry, which there aren't that many of those, um, you get like the flavor of raspberry along with those hard chocolate pieces. I like, I finally went away from the boot daddy, which is what I get every single time essentially. And yeah. I'm glad I did. Cause that thing, I know it's there for a limited time, so I don't know when it's gone, but 
get it while you can because it's awesome. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to get one of those for my mom because she's real into chocolate raspberry mm -hmm. and she needs a little bit of a change up from the same three things she's been eating. I, by the way, props to my mom who is under 100 pounds but goes through two pounds of Fannie Mae a week. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I'm like, mom, where's your candy? She's like, what? I go, mom, I bought you two pounds of Fannie Mae last week. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah? And you're going like, to buy me two more this week. Yes, son. I did, mom. Where is it? Not sure. <laughs> I'm like you're lying to me. I know you're. I know you've got memory issues, but you're lying. Right. You know exactly where that candy is. It's in your belly. <laughs> oh my god. She's whatever. Yeah. Do she's you? Under 100 pounds. Whatever makes her happy. As long mm -hmm. as she's eating something, yes. I'll take it. Yes. Okay. Uh, got a new place to review. Um, so I go to therapy in Burr Ridge, mm -hmm. um, and right there is like the Burr Ridge shopping area, like right off 55 there. Okay. Um, so I went to Capri Express. The address is 114 Burr Ridge Parkway. Uh, wasn't sure what to expect. I've driven past this place, but had kind of a long session and needed something quick. So walk in there. Here's the meatball sub and fries. Yeah, buddy. This was like nine dollars. Really? It Three was, meat. Those don't look like super small meatballs either. They are not. They're not like softball meatballs. Sure, but they're also not the golf balls. They're somewhere in between. Okay. But that's probably a six-inch sub roll. Three meatballs in there, nice. and then the fresh cut fries. And then I took that. They put, par I guess, for a little side of parmesan. Mm -hmm. Put parmesan on the sub and the fries. There you go. Oh yeah, that was terrific. And they've got like uh, every day they've got like lunch and dinner, like takeout specials. Mm -hmm. So they'll have it's not a buffet, but it's literally like there's no inside. There's a little porch with like maybe four or five tables to eat. But yeah. it's basically a grab and go kind of a place. Sure. Not a grab and go, but like a takeout only okay. kind of a place. Um, but when I went in there, it had like lemon chicken, gnocchi, like a bunch of like some veggie, like roasted veggies, like under you know, a buffet style. Yeah. And you, you pick like three of whatever they have offered for like nine 99 and they just fill like a to go thing for you. So I'm going to start making a habit of going to Capri express. So Capri is, is in the same like shopping area. It's actually where it was like Joel Quenville's number one spot when he wasn't uh, protecting mm -hmm. uh, rapists mm -hmm. um, right there. in Burridge is like in the same plaza, but this Capri express is like really tiny right by that little Brookhaven market. Uh, the meatball sub was absolutely great. The bread was soft but crispy. It was strong enough to hold the meatballs so they weren't like falling all over the place. Oh, dude, with a little side of Parmesan and just sprinkle that on there. It yeah. was perfect. So try that. And then do you remember hmm. three or four years ago, I found these Doritos, the Blazing Buffalo Ranch Doritos that I could not find yes. for the life of me? Yes. Today at the jewels, there they are. The oh, full shit. size bag. I finally have found these. I'm telling you, it's been three or four years. I got them at a speedway in Bowling Brook when I was okay. leaving my sister in law's house. Like, just need something quick. Got some mm -hmm. gas, got a pop, got those. And I'm like, these are amazing. Some of the random things that like 7 Elevens or I gas know. stations have are yeah. clutch. Like, um, where was I this week where, oh, it was a, I don't remember the brand, like how the gas station was branded, but it was just like inside a, a larger like gas station and they had like four or five different flavors of high chew. Oh, I love and I was like, oh, cause like the, um, in Walgreens, they'll have like the strawberry by itself, like two for two fifty or something yeah, yeah. like that. But and they'll have like your variety packs, but they hit this one. This uh gas station had like five different flavors, damn, like just all by themselves. And I was like, damn, I wish I wasn't running late to get to a uh, you know, a golf outing because otherwise I would have been like, yes, 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 yes. I guess I could have <laughs> just grabbed them all, but you know, yeah, they uh, would have melted by the time I got done. So, have you ever had the cola high chew? No, I keep favorite. like looking for like I remember you've mentioned them. They're hard to find. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's that's the tough part. If you ever go to the candy, and I know you never go to the city, we got to break that habit from you. Yeah. Uh, if you go to Chinatown, they've got like the mm-hmm. like the where you fill the bag, like the penny candy store. Yeah. They've got every haichu you could possibly imagine. Nice. Like weird flavors that probably are not sold here. The like you have to get the Google Translate app and mm-hmm. to see what the bag says. Yeah. Like what am I eating? What is this? <laughs> you know. But the cola ones are phenomenal. Anyway, these Blaze and Buffalo Ranch Doritos. I found them a jewel. They were kind of hiding. Like, you know, you'll see the, like the Dorito section. It'll be like four or five wide. Yeah. The, these Doritos had like maybe one piece of two, like maybe two wide. Sure. So if you want to, if you mean to try these after I talked about them, try them. They taste exactly like they sound blazing Buffalo ranch. So they're spicy, they're ranchy and they're buffalo They are phenomenal. And then one more thing I found today also with uh-huh. the jewels. Uh, and you can see Addie's hand holding these because she tore, almost tore open the whole bag. Albanese watermelon slices. Ooh. So these are, you know, Albanese, the gummy bear company. Yes. And these are like sugar dusted. Okay. But they're also, did you ever have the sherbet Albanese? I don't think I have. Okay. So like they're like gummy bear is translucent. Yes. Right. These and the sherbets are like creamier. Okay. So they're not translucent. They're kind of opaque. And uh, they're, is that the same thing? Opaque? I don't know. Whatever. Uh, you can't see through them. Right. With the dusting and are super soft and smushy. These uh, watermelon slices from Albany's were great. They were at the Jewel on like a special display of like seasonal Albany's. So they had these and then they had like spooky mix. It was gummy pumpkins and then like the marshmallowy gummy ghosts mm-hmm. and like uh gummy bats okay. like in a bag so um look for those the watermelon slices from albany's really really good i think that's all i've no it's not what did you tell me to prep for like 15 minutes before oh, the podcast yes. started okay. yes, yes yes so hope asked me this and it took me a long time to think of this <laughs> what is your most boomer take <laughs> Okay. And when I say boomer, I mean yeah. baby boomer, like our parents are boomers. Right. And they're known to have like crabby get off my lawn kind of takes. What is your boomeriest take, Rick Camp? Okay. I have one that I, I'm going to give two because I think one is fairly broad in scope that like a lot of people feel this way. I'm also uh, wondering if we share one. And I think we might. Okay. Um, I only have one other and I'd be floored if you were on the second one with me but this first one the one that i think most people would agree with stop talking in public on speakerphone stop it with this add one to my list (laughs) (laughs) like yeah uh what i can't hear you i'm in the store and he's here right like, is the person that is speaking on a Bluetooth anything mildly annoying? Sure, because you have a moment of not knowing if they're speaking to you or not. Right. But at least it's more respectful I don't than think like ends of a conversation. Right. I don't need that in my life. Okay. Think about other people. Good. I like that one. Okay. I Second should one. have thought of that because it bothered me several times just this week. Modern animation is too real and I don't like it. Oh, <laughs> I like, and also, and kind of like tied with it. I don't need like real life versions of every like movie that's animated. I, yes. I don't need them. I'm not okay. saying like they're terrible sure. or anything. I just have zero interest in them. And also, I get that it's also part of the, we have no new ideas. So we're just going to remake the same shit. Also, but, you're like, furious that the little mermaid is black. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Like, who cares? Rick, let it go. Jeez. Who, yeah, right. Who cares about that? But like, seriously, like some of the new animation, I'm like, this just looks too real. Like, I, I get that it's technology and it, and it, but like, did anybody like movies in the 80s or 90s less because the animation was it was so clearly drawn? Like, no, no, no. So like. Sure, some of the stuff is cool. Like, um, I think the animation in Elemental is really cool, just because of that. Like, yet. It's I like it. I think I like it a little more than most did. Um, but like, just by keeping the nature of the properties of like fire and water and whatever. 
Mm -hmm. uh but yeah i really like that i i like the animation and that like inside out too i think is is generally like that's kind of like the border where like the people are realistic but i don't know there's just enough to inside out too that isn't real that i think i'm i'm here for generally i'm probably going down a slippery slope with this but whatever like i just don't need modern animation like if it's going to keep progressing i don't know i know exactly what you're saying yeah I, way, i'm i'm totally fine with like if a a movie came out tomorrow that had more like 90 style animation i would not be like oh well, you know we can't yeah. watch this because it's not the highest quality whatever shut up well have you seen um the new it's on disney plus the x-men 97 series no where it, it is a new x-men animated series in okay. the animation style of the 90s show oh nice yes it's cool like it's yeah. it is definitely comes off as very retro yeah but check it out i think you'll like it because it's that old style animation by the way you brought up like the elements of elementals yeah it reminded me how i learned about the elements do you remember battle beasts the toys oh yeah see i almost thought you were gonna go captain planet on me no so <laughs> like okay the, i i love these things and they didn't last very long so i remember the commercial was like fire water water beats fire blah blah and like the yeah. these action figures fight so if you're not watching on youtube youtube.com slash i'm fat podcast you would buy these toys it was like two it was like a rhino and a dog or like whatever and they're mm -hmm. like muscular yeah very boring on the mic hologram yes mm -hmm. uh these hologram things in her chest but you didn't know what they were when you bought them yeah so then you would rub the thing in her chest and it would be either fire earth or mm -hmm. water and that's how you would determine who won the fight. Yeah. It was kind of cool. It was kind of creative. I enjoyed them. Battle Beasts. It sounds like a very early version of like what Pokemon ended up being. Uh, Yes. In a way of just yes, like, okay, you have, you have the different types. And then one type is better than another type, but worse against a different type. And that type of, that type of thing. I think the reason these didn't work is because once you bought them, yeah. you knew which one won every time. <laughs> True. <laughs> Very so, true. Aside from like the first purchase of okay, well, this one's water, this one's fire, yes. this one's earth. Uh, not much else to do with these toys now. Now that I play with them once. All right, um, Jay, okay. My now boomer. that now that we are in your realm of old. Yes, thank you. So yes. Uh, what is your most first of all, take? I, your speakerphone thing is absolutely correct. Knock it off. Yes. No one cares. You're annoying literally everyone. Yes. Uh, number two. Stop asking me to tip you for everything. Yes. Stop. 100% like, agree. If I, if I'm not sitting and you're not bringing me food, I shouldn't have to tip you. If I'm picking up a pizza and you go, here's your pizza. I shouldn't have to tip you. Correct. If I'm walking into the restaurant, buying a donut or coffee or whatever it might be, I shouldn't have to tip you for making the coffee and giving it to me agreed i it's out of control yes it's and it's everywhere it's just, right it's everywhere and i i understand to a point that i think some of the software that's used by some of these places it's probably just like a default part of the software i'm sure it could be turned off i i'm sure it could be but like yeah it's it's ridiculous at least it seems like to me some of the places the even if the option is there the people working don't ex don't actually expect you to do anything yeah and like that's appreciated but i think it partially just also comes back to companies aren't paying people enough so you know they're trying to put the onus on the customer to add even more to their order as opposed to paying all their employees whatever yeah. amount more well guess what so i uh, i agree with that and usually when i'm asked i do tip like mm -hmm. again, we went to uh Athletes Unlimited yesterday yeah. in Hot Rosemont and like concession stand. Do you want a tip? Okay. I'm already paying seven dollars for a hot dog and five for a 12 ounce pop, but I'll throw another dollar on here for the server who got it for me. Right. Like it's just it's relentless. And I will say, like a place like Starbucks, it's like custom making me a drink. Okay. Sure. Fine. Right? Like there's a little more to it. Mm -hmm. But like I heard 
there's a local business mm-hmm. and I don't think I've ever talked about them on this podcast. And, okay. and someone on our like neighborhood page was like, I think it's ridiculous that we have to tip and this place does it for instance. And, and one of the employees chimed in and they're like, by the way, the owners get those tips, not us. So I know that's not everywhere. Sure. But I don't know. I'm going to keep doing it because I feel guilt. It's a guilt thing for me. I've reached a point where it's pending on what it is. Yeah. Depending on what it is. If it's like I'm picking up a pizza and it's there. No. Yeah. The reason I came is because I don't want to pay for a delivery fee. Exactly. Yeah. <sighs> anyway. All right. Well, there's my boomer take. Okay. I think that they're pretty tame. I think most people probably agree with yeah. what we've said. Yeah, exactly. I don't think there's anyone super happy about having to tip for every freaking thing on earth anymore. No. All right. With that, is it time to ask the fats? Absolutely. Ask a fat about this and that. It's time to chat with the fats. Speaking of uh, old man corner, we've got an email here from our buddy Lance Levine, uh, who is a frequent contributor to the I'm Fat Podcast fan page. And I think he just wanted to rant to us. Uh, okay. Lance says, I'll be happy when the Olympics are over because next Monday, the multitude of pointless Reese's medals will go on sale for half price. W2F, a buddy of mine asked me if I tried them and I scoffed. They're just differently shaped cups. Come on, give me something different. Reese, pretzels, chips, dark chocolate, etc." Keep up the good work, boys. Not Jason from Oshkosh, Lance Levine. Thank you, Lance. I get that. I saw those two, mm-hmm. the uh, Reese's medals, and I'm like, they're the same cost. They look smaller. I'm out. I'm good. I'll just get yeah. a regular Reese's. I know you're out on all things Reese's. Right. But, um, in, but in theory, like, I agree. Yeah, don't shrink mm-hmm. my stuff. Yeah. So oh, also, yes. we should probably... Uh, say this too because now that it is out uh congrats to our guy charlie the baking guy for the shine yes and the old daily herald that's right and I, he's i have the bacon report here i forgot to play it because i'm a dumb first of all <laughs> uh and second of all he's basically sold out because the thing went so well that's awesome he said he, said he sold a month's worth what do you say a month's worth in two days let me double that's check. fantastic um, and, he, and he earned yeah. that as opposed as opposed to our um <laughs> our coup that we had in, during covid yes exactly <laughs> he said he's he earned a month's worth in two and a half days of nice. bacon sales if you haven't seen the daily herald article mm-hmm. uh we tweeted it out from our account it's also on all of our socials uh so go check that out but uh charlie's doing great so give it a listen here is this week's bacon report i haven't heard it because he sent it mid-show i don't know what's left let's find out thanks jay if you saw the Daily Herald article, it was a huge success, and I'll be elbow deep in pork belly for the next month at terrible. minimum. As of right now, I'm out of stock, so thank you all very much who participated in ordering the last 36 to 72 hours. Uh, I'll be getting a bunch of flavors made over the next week or so. Um, if there are extra packs, they'll make it up onto the website, but those flavors are as following. Maple pepper, chorizo, red wine, applewood. French toast, Korean barbecue, jardinera, jalapeno garlic, rosemary, Nashville hot, Cajun, vanilla bourbon, and cherry Dr. Pepper. Nice. Bacon jams are just the original right now, but uh, again, I can always make anything that you'd like. Just let me know. And for all you fats out there, don't forget about your 10% off promo code of I'm fat through the end of the summer uh, on all of your orders. Uh, Good week. Here's for next week for the bacon report. I'm Charlie, the bacon guy. <laughs> Charlie Char- sounds exhausted. <laughs> He's go- he is the, the Jimmy Butler gif or the Jimmy Butler meme from the bubble. Just yes. like leaning. He's both elbows on. The- oh, God. <laughs> He's covered in bacon, bacon juice, which is not awful. Right. Uh, I know he also got punched in the face by his daughter yesterday. So he's got a bit of a shiner Damn. going as well. Listen, if you order from Charlie, uh based on the daily herald thing uh first of all thank you if you did it through us thank you uh but if you've placed an order recently give him a little bit of patience it might take a couple days extra um of course if it's for a gift or something and you have to get it quick get in touch with them and let them know but otherwise if it's just because oh i want to try some 
give him a couple extra days to get all this stuff made because he's overwhelmed with demand, which is great. That's what we yes. want. That's a good thing. Uh, but the bacon doesn't make itself. Um, so and add a tip for Charlie. <laughs> While you're at it. I'm just gonna it's gonna ask you a little question right there. It's gonna, it's gonna ask you a question. Shut up. Like again, it's not their fault. Never mind. Okay. So get some bacon from Charlie. Charlie the bacon guy <laughs> gmail.com uh is the email, or go to Charlie the bacon guy.com to uh go through the website, check out everything there. And if you want to order a bunch of it, uh feel free. But again, just give them some time. It'll get done quickly, but probably not as quickly as typical. Sure. I would say. So just uh give him a couple extra days um longer than you typically would, and he'll get it out to you as soon as he can. Yes. With that, I think we're done. Follow us on all of our social media at I'm Fat Pod. I'm Fat Pod at gmail.com to send in your thoughts, questions, recommendations. Also, call the fat phone, 708 858 3314. This could be dangerous, but call us with your most boomer takes. Oh, I like that. That's fun. Yeah. They could be food related. They could not be food related like ours. Whatever. Whatever they are, 708 858 three three one four that could be fun it could also blow up in our <laughs> face but you will know either way uh check us out on spotify or or uh patreon if you like and i'm fatmerch.com for all of your t public shopping and especially our stuff yeah that stuff t-shirts mugs whatever the hell it is get our logo on something that you would like to have please youtube.com slash i'm fat podcast subscribe like each video and we need that runtime so we're getting there let those run in the background or hey just watch us and feel better about your own face after looking at ours Fair. And the best thing you can do, subscribe, unsubscribe, resubscribe, unsubscribe, resubscribe. Leave us the old five-star rating and review and check out our sponsors like Charlie and Mazda of Orland Park and Fredo's Culinary Kitchen and Nick and Ivy. So for Jay, I'm Rick, and this is the I'm Fat Podcast. French toast, grilled cheese, and ham sandwich.